All right, let's go. It's time to look on the bright side of what I consider to be some of the lousiest cartoons to ever face the light of day. These are those rare, shining moments from normally abysmal cartoons that show us with a little effort, even the crappiest cartoons can be okay. So let's check out some diamonds in the garbage with the top 10 best episodes of bad cartoons. And as always, if you don't think these cartoons are bad, that's great. It's just my silly personal opinion. And I'm glad you can enjoy these cartoons when I can't. So take this list with a pinch of salt. Anyway, let's do this countdown. Number 10. Johnny Test. Johnny Strikes Back Again. Damn it! I heard this was the highest rated Johnny Test episode. But it still starts off with the two main characters shoving ice up their nose to see who can hold it the longest. Brain freeze, brain freeze. At first I was thinking, there's no saving this. This is too stupid for words. But let's give it a chance. Maybe it's got a really clever twist. But then they surprised me by farting so hard that they blow up the city. I'm sure it'll get amazing soon. The FBI then takes away all of Johnny's possessions and shuts down the lab. Okay, seeing Johnny miserable is kind of a high point for this episode. Then the artificial plasma cyborg army takes over the world. It's got some well-paced action scenes and it's kind of good animation. Oh, who am I kidding? This is the best episode of Johnny Test, but it's still abysmal by good cartoon standards. I admit, they do save the world by creating a mutant army consisting of friends and villains they've met throughout the series. That's kind of fun. And then they save the universe by farting on their enemies. Oh, forget it, I give up. This one's the highest on the list because I still can't quite recommend it. It's just the absolute best I could find of Johnny Test. And for number nine, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Robo Ninjas. Somehow, I still love Sonic, even today. As much as his games are mostly subpar, pandering, glitchy disasters now, I still respect Sonic as a character. Since when has that been a problem? This cartoon was defective cereal box deek garbage my brother and I watched obsessively growing up. But once my brain had actually developed to the point where I could count past my fingers, I had this dawning moment where I said, Wait a minute, this cartoon is awful. The animation was lazy to the point where it was comical. The voice cast consisted of three people. And it had the depth of a spoon. As much as I look back on this cartoon with fond memories, technically it was abominable. And this was the best episode we were given. The concept for this episode was just good old stupid fun. The plot for this one is right out of a 90s cereal box commercial. Scratch and ground are implanted with the fighting skills of elite ninjas. There was something very compelling about this episode. For the first time in 50 freaking episodes, Sonic's lame brain disguises no longer fool the badniks. And it actually looks like they may finally win. Eventually, Sonic has to face off alone against an army of super robo ninjas. This episode is just the extremeness of the 90s in a nutshell. This one's also high on the list because, well, it's still incredibly stupid. With horrible one-liners and animation that makes 12 ounce mounts look thoughtfully produced. Okay, well, maybe not that bad. And for number eight, SpongeBob Season 6, Sandcastles in the Sand. I'm cheating a little with this one because I don't think the later seasons of SpongeBob are that terrible, with some exceptions. But in the midst of when SpongeBob was arguably at its worst, this episode was actually very enjoyable. It was a simple, fun, very imaginative episode about SpongeBob and Patrick just having a pleasant day at the beach, with Armies, tanks, and cannons. I remember seeing this one a long time ago and being amazed at the imagination that went into their sand kingdom. There's a real sense of action and excitement as they establish their literal sand castles and battle one another's armies. It's one of those episodes that really takes me back to the excitement of being a kid with a wild imagination at the beach. It's an episode that really shows just how much intrigue can be made from the simplest of concepts. 
Personally, I think this episode represents the best of SpongeBob in a time when the series was only giving us mediocrity. And for number seven, The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, Mechanical Genie Island. Flapjack, what can you make of this thing? Under normal circumstances, I'm normally put off by the fecal colored oceans and the pug fugly animation. But some people really do like it. And even I found this episode really funny. Flapjack and Captain Knuckles get washed up onto an island where they meet a mysterious mechanical genie. Your talent for this game is most impressive. The mechanical genie is a well-voiced, interesting character. Though that face is really creepy. I kept getting this strange ambivalent feeling of being both horrified at this uncanny David Lynch style genie, yet chuckling whenever he spoke. <laughs> you really have to be an amazing voice actor to put on such a hilarious voice that you override your audience's visual perceptions. I couldn't figure out why this guy sounded so familiar. Then it hit me. My precious I hold the love of humanity. Somebody put me out of my misery. It's Johnny Bravo stealing the scene and bringing life to what I otherwise consider a pretty bland cartoon. I found myself smiling all the way through this episode of Flapjack, so I consider it to be the best of the series. Number six, Clarence Dreamboat. The first thing that struck me when I heard Clarence's voice is, this kid doesn't sound right. We could build a tree for it, or play aliens. Honestly, when you see this face, do you really expect to hear this deep, booming voice come out? For me personally, Clarence normally walks a very fine line between kinda charming to hyperactive, aggravating twit. Generally, I've found the cartoon not quite terrible. But I actually really recommend this particular Clarence episode. It's a really touching look at the life of Sumo as he struggles to make a boat out of nothing in order to make something out of his life when it feels like he has just never been given a break in his entire life. And just when Sumo feels like giving up completely, Clarence and Jeff come in to help him. This is the first time I've seen Clarence really create something relatable, harsh and tragic yet moving at the same time. It really does drive home that sometimes people just have a bad slice of life. It's not their fault, it doesn't make them bad people. And it is actually legitimately upsetting when we see Sumo finally break down and give up. And when they went down to the ocean with their piece of crap boat, I so wanted to see that boat hold, just for a minute, just to give Sumo at least one fulfilled ambition. And in that moment where it floats, it is the most beautiful moment in the series. This episode shows us just how much potential Clarence has to be a cartoon that immerses us in a character and touches viewers' hearts. And for number five, Uncle Grandpa, Full Moon. You're probably gonna think I'm nuts for saying this, but some of the new Uncle Grandpa episodes are actually passable. They're no longer completely nonsensical, the plot has some coherence to it, and they've actually got some really good visual jokes in now. Service of duty! Hostage rescue! Huh? What's going on, Pizza Steve? It's all part of the gaming experience. It honestly feels like a completely different cartoon. And Full Moon is the perfect example of a simple, yet creative, and actually well-paced episode. By season two, a lot of the incoherent surrealism that got the cartoon its bad reputation has been toned down. And we actually get some really interesting stories. Like a full moon being replaced by a super moon that lets off moon tan rays that turns Uncle Grandpa's pants into wear pants. Okay, so maybe it's still completely nonsensical, but I like it now. It's all kind of sad though, because after a season of bad episodes starting them off, there's no way a cartoon can recover from that. Uncle Grandpa has such a ratty reputation now that most people won't even bother seeing the new ones. Which is understandable, but it is a shame when the creators really up their game at the last moment. Number four, Fish Hooks, Parasite Fright. I don't think Fish Hooks is outright terrible. It's just 
really bland, but very inoffensive. I feel like there's a nice heart to this show. I mean, I don't hate the characters, but I just normally find them as bland as oat bran. But this episode was like oatmeal, lightly drizzled in honey. And why am I continually making oatmeal analogies today? Sorry. Milo gets paranoid after watching a horror movie with B and Oscar, resulting in him going into paranoid delusions over all the fish brain parasites in the ocean. Normally, I find the characters a little too hyperactive, but in this one, the jokes are pretty swift and sometimes even funny. Milo? Use your words. And it's a good message on the dangers of paranoia and letting your imagination run wild. And unlike most bad cartoons, it left me with a pleasant enough feeling in my gut. Number three, Sonic Boom, the Meteor. Personally, I've generally found Sonic Boom pretty meh. It's not the worst, but I do normally change channels if I see it. I really don't like what they did with some of the characters, particularly Knuckles. But The Meteor was actually a really intriguing, fun episode. It's essentially your standard good old body swap episode. What am I doing in Eggman's body? You're Sonic now. <laughs> but it's really cleverly put together. I just never get sick of the trope of seeing the minds of the characters we know in the bodies of their worst enemies. Regardless of the cartoon, the voice actors always seem to have a lot of fun with it. And along with time travel, it's one of my favorite cartoon concepts. Little jokes like Sonic and Eggman both rushing to touch the meteor to call dibs on it are actually really funny moments. While I personally found the game abysmal and the cartoon normally subpar at best, this episode was pretty damn funny. I'd actually recommend it. And the second best episode of Bad Cartoons is Teen Titans Go. 40%, 40%, 20%. I can safely say, out of all the Teen Titans Go episodes, this one was the best one I've ever seen. In fact, it was downright passable. And the ending is actually good. It's a surprisingly creative commentary of the addiction of music. It was 40% written by Carl Burnett, 40% by Franklin Enea, and a sweet, sweet 20% by William J. Reagan. And has a more hard-boiled, completely off-the-wall animation style. It's funny how the highest rated episode in this cartoon is when they abandon their usual lazy, chibi animation style. The ending is passionate, beautiful, and I'll be honest, for one brief moment, I almost felt like I was watching the original Teen Titans series. This episode shows the amazing creative potential hidden in the writers of this cartoon series. What can be done when you actually treat your viewers with intelligence? I never thought I'd say this, but I do recommend this particular episode of Teen Titans Go! The night begins to shine! And before we get to number one, I'd like to give a couple of quick honorable mentions. Sanjay and Craig, flip flops. Oh, come on. The highest rated episode of Sanjay and Craig is about eating belly button lint. This is the best episode we've been given. I gave you a chance, Sanjay and Craig, and you literally defecated in my face. Fanboy and chum chum. Pick a nose. Does it sound like it's gonna be a good episode? Really? The highest fan rated episode of this pile of schlock was called Pick a Nose? And was about the boys swapping their noses for the day? No, I, I just can't do it. Fanboy and Chum Chum does not make this list. And with those said, on to number one. And the number one best episode of Bad Cartoons is Modern Family Guy. The Road 2 miniseries. In my opinion, even modern Family Guy goes back to hints of when the cartoon was great, when we get a team up with Brian and Stewie. It's funny how as soon as they take out the main characters of the show, Peter, Megan, Lois and Chris, the show gets so much better. There's something about when Brian and Stewie work together that just brings out the best in both of them. It's one of those interesting cases where, alone, they can both be obnoxious and unlikable. But when they're forced to work together or just decide to go on an adventure together, it's easy to get drawn into the thrilling environments they get thrown into. From these episodes, we get those amazing musicals that show off Seth's incredible singing voice and some really intriguing creative setups. From traveling through pre-war Germany, the North Pole, 
to traveling across interstellar dimensions. To be honest, the Road 2 miniseries are my one exception to my rule of not watching Family Guy anymore. If I see an episode starring Brian and Stewie like Road to the Multiverse, Road to Germany, or Road to Vegas, I'll give it a look. They make me once again see the glimpses of brilliance that still shine through Family Guy very occasionally. And that really makes these episodes both tragic and beautiful at the same time. And in the end, all these episodes show off the true potential of these cartoons. These episodes show creative, talented people behind the scenes of these otherwise bad cartoons. And when the creators put their mind to it, that previous dislike we had for these cartoons can be redeemed with something innovative, unique, and amazing. Do you think I missed a particular episode? I've got no doubt there's tons more good episodes out there, so feel free to let me or others know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.